Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is a progress. And working together is only the success. Today, Fairfield Institute of Management and Technology and Institute of Public Health and Hygiene came forward to sensitize the society in collaboration with Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute and Research Center on Environment and Cancer. It is my pleasure to welcome all the dignitaries, Madam Melanie Secretary, FIMC Group of Organizations, Dr. Vineet Kalwar, Director, Medical Oncology, Professor Saroj Vyas, Director, Fairfield Institute, Dr. Anita Mukherjee, Principal, IPHNH, Professor Sanjeev, IPHNH, Mitch Prabhati, Senior Executive, Digital Marketing, Mr. Prashant Nagarwal, Senior Executive, Marketing. Now I request Madam Nalini to kindly felicitate Dr. Vinnie Talwar. Thank you so much. Now I request Dr. Anita Mukherjee to kindly felicitate Ms. Pragati and Mr. Prashant. Thank you so much. In our daily life, we come across the word cancer quite often. It is the unspoken fear of every one of us. Once a rare disease, cancer is spreading fast in the modern world. But what is cancer? What does this actually mean? In order to shed some much needed light on our questions, on our queries, we have among us Dr. Vinnie Tanwar, Director of Medical Oncology from Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute and Research Center. Dr. Vinnie Tanwar is presently working as a director in the Department of Medical Oncology in Rajiv Gandhi. He has been serving the Department of Medical Oncology since May 2002. He has completed his medical oncology from prestigious Adhyar Cancer Institute, Chennai. He has over 40 publications in his credit in national, international, peer-reviewed journals. He is also the member of European Society of Medical Oncology, Society of Clinical Oncology, Indian Cooperative Oncology Network, and Indian Society of Oncology. He has been awarded with variety and prestigious awards like Chitiksa Ratan Award in 2010 by the Delhi State Medical Association for his efforts in field of cancer, Award of Excellence in, Medi in Medicine in 2017, Award of Excellence in Medical Oncology at Rajiv Gandhi Cancer Institute and Research Center in 2016, Vishish Chikitsa Ratan Award and in 2016 and many more. I request you, sir, to enlighten our minds on the theme.
we are undergoing uh, daily in our lives, how uh, the environment uh, impacts us and how we impact the environment and where does the cancer come in between in all these uh, conundrums. So I would be uh, reading about environment and cancer which is uh, quite close to my heart and uh, it's always uh, good you know, to have an interaction and uh, create a kind of an outreach as to what we are uh, really uh, daily in uh, our lives. Uh, the question is, uh, what is cancer? Whenever I go for some meetings or whenever I go for the social gatherings, the obvious question comes is, what is cancer? So, they are uh, basically the cells which uh, continue to divide even when not really uh, needed, you know, there is the tumor. It is basically something which is going against the body. Some factors which trigger the normal cells in the body, which lead to the propagation of uh, cancer. And these cells, they start from one point, and from there they start uh, spreading out throughout the whole of the body, and uh, cause the spread or the metastasis, as we say in our terms. Uh, of cancer. So, just for uh, uh, convenience, if we say that this cartoon, this is the cell, what you have is you have signals which are passing from outside the cell into the nucleus, and there the uh, repetition of the normal cells takes place. But in a cancerous situation, when you have an excessive stimulation from outside the cell, what happens is there is an excessive stimulation of the nucleus inside and that leads to excessive uh, stimulation and finally tumor proliferation. So what causes this excessive stimulation which is not there in the normal uh, circumstances? These are the factors which lead to the propagation of cancer in the human body. Some of them we know, some of them we don't know. There are some correlations and associations uh, with uh, this uh, the proliferation. Yeah. So if you see the Indian uh, context, the common cancers in India are uh, the most common is the lung cancer in the uh, men and the breast cancer in the women. Next comes the head and neck cancer in women, dying men and uh, the survival cancer in the human. So you have a host of cancers and what we are seeing in our uh, uh, situation nowadays in our clinical practice is that these cancers, they are rising at an alarming rate. And WHO has told that the next epidemic to come is going to be cancer after 2020. Why? Because uh, the non communicable diseases like cancer, they are increasing much more than the other communicable diseases on which we are being controlled as tuberculosis, etc. So, this is what I told the five most frequent cancers in India are the breast, cervical, oral cavity, lung, and the colorectal cancers. And this is the second most common cause of death in uh, India, which is very, very alarming. And about 2,500 persons die every day because of tobacco related cancers. So, tobacco, which we are all conversant, it can cause cancer, it can cause cancer of the head and neck, it can cause cancer of the lungs, it can cause cancer of the fruit pipe, it can cause cancer of the stomach, of the urinary bladder. Everywhere in the body, it can cause problems. And uh, that is why you find that there are a lot of campaigns which are going on for uh, the stoppage of smoking and stoppage of uh, chewing of tobacco, which leads to this. So, there can be a link, a genetic link between the environment and uh, the uh, genes and you find that there is an increased susceptibility to cancer whenever there is an environmental insult which uh, takes place uh, 
And the cancer is based on an interplay between the environment and the genetic factors, and the scientists have still not been able to comprehend which factors should be given more weightage and which, which factors should not be given more weightage. For example, uh, the carcinoma stomach, which is a very, very important cancer in Japan, we find that those Japanese who migrate from Japan to America, the incidence of carcinoma stomach in those Japanese is very, very less as compared to those Japanese which are staying in Japan. So this translates into the fact that the environment has a very big role to play as far as the cancer propagation of the cancer genesis is concerned. So this is a kind of a correlation and an association which can be there in uh, these kind of people. Tobacco, as I told you, uh, every third adult in the rural areas and every fifth adult in the urban areas is uh, using tobacco. And that is why you have such a big problem in India. I would like to uh, uh, share an incident with you. I was going to uh, Ranchi uh, for a lecture and some Somewhere in between from the airport to the institute where I had to go, our car broke down. And uh, we had to wait for about 10 15 minutes we had to repair the car. So I just came out of the car and saw one small boy, about, must be about 12 or 13 years. He was uh, taking care of the bones there and uh, he was chewing something. So I went near him and I said, What are you doing? He says tobacco. I said, it's such a young age. Why are you chewing tobacco? Pack in the answer, ke ye to ki ki So this is the kind of mindset which is there in the rural folks. So it is such a big problem and that is why you know, we have to educate more and more people that this is not the correct thing to do. Because you can imagine a boy from 14 years who chews tobacco the kind of irritant which is there in the mouth and which keeps on you know, irritating the mucosa inside the mouth for 10 years, definitely it is going to create a lot of repercussions there and of course in his digestive system when this tobacco and the chemicals related to tobacco go inside the system. Another thing which is very important is the person who smokes the cigarette that is known as the first hand smoke. That means that that individual is getting the side effects of smoking. Then you come to the second hand smoke. Second hand smoke is the people who are sitting around that person. So they are the ones who are getting the similar effects as the person who is smoking. Now there is a very new entity which is known as third hand smoke. Third hand smoke is that if a person has smoked cigarette in a hotel, for an example, and he leaves the room. You are a non-smoker, you come to the room. The smoke particles, the uh, tobacco particles, they go and rest on the bed sheets and on the curtains. So if you just ruffle the sheets or the curtains, you take in that smoke particles and it again can be deleterious to you. So you have first hand, second hand, third hand smoke. So that is why you have non-smoking rooms, smoking rooms and so on and so forth. So you can get the detrimental effects of smoking anywhere and everywhere. And to top it up, how the environment is impacting us is that since we are uh, having so many vehicles, so many pollutants, the air quality in uh, Delhi and Gurgaon is very poor for the last almost one month. Which translates into the fact that we are smoking 10 cigarettes a day, whether we like it or not. We are also smoking, the 70 year old elders in our family, they are also smoking and the children who are 4 or 5 years of age, they are also smoking. So if a person says that I eat organic food, I have air filters in the house and I drink uh, RO water, you know, you cannot be bereft of the side effects of the impact of the environment which is happening because of what we are going to be. So these are points to ponder. The other thing is alcohol. So if you have alcohol and if you smoke, what you call in Hindi is sonar you know. 
it is doubly detrimental. As far as I am concerned, what I tell my patients is that addiction in any form is bad. So alcohol can also cause uh, problems and there are certain types of cancer just like the liver cancer, the uh, voice box cancer, these are the two cancers which have a direct relation with alcohol. So if you take alcohol, you're going to create problems for yourself. Similarly, there are certain viruses and bacteria. You must have heard of hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus. When you have hepatitis B and C viruses over a long period of time, then you can have a problem which is known as the hepatocellular cancer, that is the cancer of the liver. And similarly, you have a, a human papilloma virus, and that too, if it is there in the ladies for a long period of time, you can have cervical cancer. So, what I am trying to say is, that if you have an irritant in the body or if you have an irritant which is being exposed to the body over a long period of time, then in that situation, at some point of time, the body succumbs to it. And in a small percentage of patients, those are the people who become afflicted with cancer. Because in the beginning, I showed you the normal cancer cell, if it is continuously being uh, irritated, by a ligand or by any substance which can cause a disruption in the production of normal cells. That is the place where cancer can come. Then you have the ultraviolet and the ionizing uh, radiation. Excessive exposure to the UV light can cause skin cancer. Fortunately for us as Indians, since we have a lot of melanin pigment in our skin, we don't have that much of a problem here. It is more so in the Caucasians or the Westerners where the melanin pigment is not there, so they can succumb to the cancer of the skin more as compared to the Asians or the uh, blacks. Inorganic fertilizers and pesticides, high exposure to the inorganic uh, fertilizers and pesticides can cause cancers of a plethora of organs in the body from head to toe. Here again, I will uh, uh, share an example. I went to Kashmir, I saw the trees which were laden with apples. So, you know, when you see green tree, when you see fruits, you feel very nice. So, there was a farmer in front of me, he was sitting, so I just deliberated with him that, you know, such a nice uh, environment is there. So, you know what he says? He says, look, it is okay for you when you come from outside and here because the would double the amount of pesticide on the trees, the fruits. I said, why do you put it double the amount of pesticide? He says, we put it because the birds which are there, they do not come and eat our apples. So, immediately I asked him, if you give the double dose, don't you think it is uh, detrimental to the people who eat those apples? He is not correct. He says, he says, I am not bothered about the who eats or who doesn't eat. I am just bothered about my produce. My produce should be intact. It should not be less. There should be no decrease because of the uh, animals or the birds which eat them. So this goes into the food chain. The increased pesticides, chemicals, they go inside the body. People who have got a good uh, immune tolerance, they are able to tolerate it. People who don't have a good immune tolerance, they succumb to it. And these irritants over a long period of time again can cause cancer. Obesity. Obesity is a, not an epidemic, well, no, I say it is a pandemic in the whole of the world because now since we are getting more and more mechanized, since we are getting uh, more and more uh, industrialized, then the kind of physical work is decreasing and more so because of this pandemic everybody is glued to the uh, online systems so the activity is also less and uh, this is a link with many types of cancers fortunately there is no direct linkage but there is a causation and association as far as the cancers are concerned cancers like the ovary cancers like the cancer of the uterus they are the foremost cancers which are linked to uh, obesity 
And of course, the research is uh, continuing. Solvents, fibers, fine particles, dust. You have uh, these chemical factories where uh, benzene is used. Benzene is a known uh, problem in the urinary bladder cancers. So, wherever you have this, you can have uh, problems with urinary bladder cancer. Asbestos, most of the areas of asbestos have been banned. Why? Because the dust from the asbestos which goes when you inhale it, it might go into the lungs and there it might create uh, problems and cause uh, the cancer of the lungs in a certain amount of patients. Dioxins, again, uh, dioxins are the kind of gases which are uh, emanated from the municipal hospital and the industrial waste, the bleaching paper parts. These are the unwanted uh, products. Again, when they go into the system, they can cause uh, problems and they can cause uh, cancers in a certain uh, group of population. And yeah, this, everybody must have seen this mountain at the GT Canal bypass, uh, this is the famous landfill which is there. This is the mountain in which you find that uh, uh, always, you know, fire is coming, there's some areas where some gases keep on leaking. And so, the ladies, I'm sure, must be knowing what is uh, aromatherapy. Aromatherapy is, you know, when you have certain good fragrances which you put on the skin starts making your skin glow and the body health figure also increases. Now this is the negative aromatherapy which is there. In an area around one or two kilometers around Balaswar, all those unfortunate people are getting this negative aromatherapy and they are getting all kind of lung problems, asthma, bronchitis and if this irritation keeps on continuing for a longer period of time, then it might translate into cancer, although there is no direct association. And similarly, like you have uh, tea, everybody takes tea, you have the uh, tea leaves, you put water through the tea and you find there is color changes, it becomes dark brown and you get the flavor. Similarly, when it rains in this landfill, the water goes through the landfill and the subsoil water which most of us are drinking, it is a kind of an extract from this, all this filth which is there and that again is going into the body system, the uh, food chain. Those are, that is the water which is going, which we people are drinking in the vicinity of about 4-5 kilometers. That is the water which is leaching into the river, uh, rivers and that is the water which is being used to give uh, water to the plants the so-called organic vegetables which is still going. So you can imagine how complex the system is and even if you don't want, it can affect you in a very, very detrimental way. And that is the reason why the government of Delhi is very, very keen to reduce this landfill and they are trying to relocate and trying to reduce this landfill because if you have a landfill, it should be level with the ground but these have become into many mountains. So they are trying to reduce it and bring it to the uh, previous normal level. Apple toxins are there. You have uh, certain kind of toxins which if they are taken, they are meat, eggs, milk, sometimes they can cause cancer of the liver. And metals, these heavy metals are there. You don't have to go far. You have to just to see the Yamuna water. You will never see the clear water. You will see that water which is black. Tarry and it has a host of chemicals, you name it and you get it. And somehow, even if you try to clean it to the maximum, some dirt or some filth might be there that might be again going into the system. There were times in my childhood when whenever I used to go out to play and I used to come back, I used to drink the water straight from the tap without thinking twice. And now, can you imagine drinking taps from the uh, tap water straight away? No. You are having filters, hypo filters, ozone filters, all kind of filters which you are having, and only then and then after that you drink the water. So, this is the impact which we have having on the environment, and that is what the backlash 
the environment is given to us as a gift, unfortunately. Again, the automobile exhaust, Delhi has the largest number of private vehicles when you combine all the other three metros. And the government policies are slightly skewed, skewed in the sense that the price of diesel is ten rupees less than the price of petrol because of whatever commercial reasons might be there. Now that led to what? That led to the dieselization of the private vehicles, the cars. Go back 20 years, there were very few diesel cars. There used to be petrol cars. So diesel exhaust particles, they are big particles. And they are the ones which can cause a lot of problems. Again, you know, the pulmonary or the respiratory problems like uh, cough, asthma, bronchitis. And in a very small percentage of cases, they can cause cancers also. So, the dieselization, the government policies, they also have an impact on the environment. So, you can understand that whichever way you look, there is a causation, there is an association, and there is an impact. And the impact, if you do something good to the nature, you do something good to the environment, the environment gives you. Similarly, if you do something bad, you abuse the environment, the environment gives you a very severe backlash. And lastly, this is the latest uh, problem, I'll say, which is there. Uh, the mobile phones. So, mobile phones and cancer, this debate is going on and on and on. And it has been shown in certain studies that the use of analog technology is probably associated with more malignant tumors. And the exposure to mobile phones for greater than 10 years can have a higher association with cancers. Because mobile handset is predominantly on one side, so you have irritation on only one side of the ear. And whenever uh, you have uh, these uh, mobiles, uh, you have a kind of a radio frequency field which is created around the body because they are uh, low non ionizing uh, low non ionizing radiations. So once you hold a mobile in your hand and if it is less than 18 inches from the body, it creates a field throughout the body and the body cells they start getting aligned to this electromagnetic field. Now if it is there for a short period of time they realign back to their normal state. But again, you know, anything which keeps on abusing for a long period of time, what happens is, the body gives way. Or constant irritation, some cells might start becoming non-self, or they start, might becoming cancers. So that is the analogy. But the last word has still to be told. And the problem here is that number of cellular telephone neurons has been estimated to be 3.8 billion billion with a B, B for Bombay, billion and that constitutes for half of the world's population now how does it impact us, half of the world's population it might but the problem is that 25% of the population is in India and China so, half of the world's population is using mobile phones. Out of that, you have half of the population or 25% of the population in India and China, then you can imagine how much impact it might be having as far as we Indians are concerned. And as I was saying, that if you increase, that is more than 10 years of the usage of mobile phones, then the chances of having the problem related to the mobile phones can be much, much higher than individuals. And that is why, you know, uh, the use unfortunately started uh, beginning in the childhood. And they have been exposed to these electromagnetic uh, radiations uh, for a longer period of time. So that is why it is, you know, bound to have a very large impact as far as we are concerned in India. And this is just to show the uh, basic physics that you have the GSM phones, then you have the CDMA phones, 
most of the phones are the DSM, that is global system for the mobile uh, communications. And then you have two types of uh, signals, one is the digital and the analog signals. Fortunately, the analog signals are reducing because they have a high ionizing power, non-ionizing power as compared to the digital uh, systems. And the digital phone transmission occurs at a lower power. But then again, the problem is anything which you abuse, then it's a problem. And I would urge all of you to go back and check the SAR values, uh, which is there, that is the measure of radiation absorption per unit weight of tissue which is expressed as watts per the kilograms. So this SAR values, as per the European and the Indian guidelines, it should be less than two. And nowadays it is mandatory that all the phones carry the SAR value. If you don't find it there, you can go to the website and make sure that the SAR value is less than 2. Because if it is more than 2, then it is going to be detrimental for the body. The Chinese phones which were there earlier, the great quality phones and even the ones which come now, which are uh, very, very cheap, they still use uh, the SAR value which are more than 2. So I think this is a very important point for all of us to go back and check what are the SAR values of the uh, phones which are there. And again, there are studies from India that, uh, like this uh, study from IIT, there is a 400 percent increase in the risk of brain cancer amongst teens using smartphones excessively. So, all of us, you know, whenever we are free, earlier where what used to be there, people used to smoke the meat, we own it, cigarette, Nikali, light it up. Now the thing is, whenever you are free, you are looking here, in right there, you got the mobile, start logging in or start talking to your friend. That friend, if the friend is free, fortunately, there is a frequency match, and then you are talking on hours and hours and hours. And especially with the kind of uh, programs which you have amongst all the telecommunication companies, they are trying to move more and more uh, customers. They give very good plans, free plans. Means. So you try to use that to the maximum. But the thing is, again, you know, you hold the phone here, your whole body is becoming electromagnetized. If it is for a small period of time, fair enough. If it is for a longer period of time, for longer number of days, it might create problems. So there is a word of caution. So how do you uh, do come about all these problems which I have uh, shown you? The ways to reduce risk is, of course, things which, you, which are in your hand, if you are smoking, you can stop smoking, there can be a cessation of smoking. You can reduce your weight, bring your weight to the normal levels. How can you do that? The easiest formula is the LIC formula, that is the Life Insurance Corporation formula, that is one inch per day. So if you are weighing your five feet, your weight should be around 60 plus minus 5 to 10 percent. So 60 to 63 or 65 kgs. If you are say 6 feet, then you know you can calculate 1 inch per kg. It should be a median of about 5 to 10 percent of both sides plus minus. It should not be more than that. If it is more, then you know you should try to curtail it, increase your exercise, and uh, do daily physical activity. Third is avoid junk foods if you can. Saying it is very easy because I am also a big fan of uh, the fast foods. But then I try to reward myself. Sometimes I slip. Sometimes you can have in moderation, but not excessively that you binge on these uh, junk foods. And you try to prevent bacterial viral infections to the most as much as you can. You try to you know, Obviously, everybody must be bathing, everybody must be taking precautions. So, these things may be in your hand, may not be in your hand. Avoid uh, direct and frequent and prolonged exposure to chemicals, ionizing radiation, medicines, whenever not required. And if you have a problem, you show to a physician nearby. The problem keeps on prolonging for, say, a period of four to six weeks. So, for example, if you have, say, cough and you have taken medicines for about one month, the problem is not improving, then, you know, there should be a high index of suspicion 
then is there anything else which can be there? Anything unfortunate like cancer or something which you know you might be missing. So you should go into the care and try to find out the cause and correct it, or otherwise, you know, to find the diagnosis how to get about it. Or go to a higher center and get it screened and get a proper diagnosis made for that. There are policies by the government, there are outreach programs, the government is looking out, the government is trying to make an effort, but then we have to ask ourselves first whether we can do it, because it starts from you first, and then it goes to the populace or the people at large. If you make an impact, don't think it's a small impact, because if one person does it, and ten follow it, it is going to make a huge epidemiological impact, as I've shown you in these slides. So in the end I'll say you never give up. There's always a hope. And I thank for your thank you for your patience. Thank you so much sir. The session was really informative and inspiring. I hope all the do's and don'ts you discussed will get made. Now I request the practice to do the following day for the vote of thanks. Thank you, Ms. Nika. Nice thing. Thank you, Ms. Sita. Diasthenic मैं इनका ध्यान आकर्षित करना चाहती हूँ कि आज का जो ये आपका लेक्चर है, वो आपके सामने जितने लोग केवल बैठे हैं, वहीं नहीं इससे लाभान्वित हो रहे हैं। हमारी संस्थान में इस समय 3000 के करीब स्टूडेंट्स एनरोल हैं। YouTube के माध्यम से और ऑनलाइन आपको केवल 3000 हमारे विद्यार्थी ही नहीं सुन रहे हैं। अभी आप इस कैंसर जैसे जो एक जिसे हम कहते हैं कि जो लाइ इलाज है जिसका कोई इलाज नहीं है इस विषय पे आपका जो आज ये व्याख्यान है वो समाज में एक जागरूकता ला रहा है वो जो युवा पीढ़ी है जो हमारे यहाँ विद्यार्थी चाहे मेडिकल पैरामेडिकल के स्टूडेंट्स हो चाहे विभिन्न जो पाठ्यक्रम रिदे से धन्यवाद करती हूँ कि आपने हमारा आतिथ्य स्वीकार किया और आज आपने कैंसर के विषय में यहाँ पे अपनी किस तरह से कैंसर फैलता है इसके रीजन क्या हैं और कैसे बचा जा सकता है इस पे आपने विस्तृत चर्चा करी अपने इस धन्यवाद ज्ञापन में मैं थोड़ा सा हमारे जो विद्यार्थी और भी ऑनलाइन हमें सुन रहे हैं उनको इसको कंक्लूजन इसका जो भी सरकार ये एक अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम एक व्याख्यान स्पीच जो रहा उसमें सर ने जो मुख्य बातें बताई वो बताया कि जो कैंसर की कॉजेस हैं उसमें तंबाकू सिगरेट शराब डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ वायरस बैक्टीरिया फर्टिलाइजर एंड पेस्टिसाइड केमिकल्स ये सारी चीजें जो है वो मुख्य रूप से इसके कॉज हैं कि यदि हम इससे बचे या इनसे दूर रहें और केवल बात यही पे नहीं रुक जाती है कि हमने अपने आप हम नहीं कंज्यूम कर रहे लेकिन यदि हमारे परिवार का सदस्य या हमारे आसपास रहने वाले लोग भी यदि इस तरह की आदतों से ग्रसित है तो हमें उन्हें भी हालांकि ऐसा नहीं है जो भी मैं इतने वर्षों से मैं ही क्या हम सभी देख रहे हैं कि चाहे तंबाकू का पैकेट हो चाहे शराब की डिब्बी हो और शराब की बोतल हो और चाहे सिगरेट की डिब्बी हो हर किसी पे वैधानिक चेतावनी लिखी हुई होती है उस भी उसके बावजूद भी हम नहीं समझते जितने भी युवा विद्यार्थी मुझे सुन रहे हैं उन सब से मेरा एक 
प्रबंध निवेदन है कि सर्वे जो आज आपको बात कही है आप जानते हैं लेकिन इसको हल्के में मत लीजिए कभी कभी हमें लगता है आप ये नहीं सोचिए कि हम बहुत वर्षों से ले रहे हैं या हमारे अभिभावक ले रहे हैं और उससे हम बच जाएंगे कभी न कभी जो ऐसे जो हमारे शरीर को हानि पहुंचाते हैं ऐसे जो जो भी पदार्थ है या जो भी सेवन करने योग्य चीजें हैं उनका तात्कालिक प्रभाव देखने को नहीं मिल सकता अमृता लेकिन कभी कभी आने वाली पीढ़ियां उसका जो प्रभाव है वो उसको भुगतती हैं और उसको देखती हैं तो ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं है दुनिया में मुझे नहीं लगता कि ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं है जिसके बिना हम रह नहीं सकते हैं और एक जो सर ने आखिरी में मोबाइल की बात कही मैं आपसे एक चीज कहूंगी कि लगता है कभी कभी कि मोबाइल आज की इस तकनीकी और वैज्ञानिक युग में मोबाइल बहुत अनिवार्य है लेकिन यदि हम ये सोच ले कि इसका कितना यूज करना है तो कुछ भी मुश्किल नहीं है मैंने अपने जीवन में एक एक आदत अपनाई है कि मैं जब घर से बाहर अपने परिवार के सदस्य के साथ होती हूँ तो अपना मोबाइल कैरी नहीं करती हूँ या फिर मैंने एक पीरियड्स बना लिए हैं कि यदि आपको बात जैसे सर ने कहा कि हम मित्रों से लंबी लंबी बात करते रहते हैं मैंने मोबाइल पे केवल मुझे लगता है और मैंने अपने अभिभावक परिजन या जो भी मित्र हैं उनसे कह रखा है कि यदि मैं फोन नहीं करती हूँ तो ये समझ लीजिए कि सब कुछ कुशल मंगल है जो मोबाइल फोन चले हैं या जो भी चली है टेक्नोलॉजी ये तो बिजनेस था लेकिन हमारे हमें अपने जीवन में ये देख लेना चाहिए कि जहाँ हमारी अनिवार्यता हो वही इस तरह के उपकरणों का उपयोग किया जाए सर ने बहुत अच्छी चीज करी सर ने कहा कि जो प्रकृति से दी हुई चीजें हैं जो पंच महाभूत जिन्हें हम कहते हैं धरती आकाश वायु अग्नि और जल ये पंच महाभूत है इससे सारी प्रकृति और ग्यारह जो हम इंद्रिया कहते हैं जिसमें हमारे पंच महाभूत पांच इंद्रिया और एक मन ये आ जाते हैं इन सब ये सब प्रकृति से मिली है और प्रकृति के साथ यदि हम खिलवाड़ करेंगे तो प्रतिक्रिया तो होगी होगी क्रिया की प्रतिक्रिया स्वाभाविक है इसलिए सबसे अच्छी चीज है कि सर जैसे जो विद्वत जन है वो हमारी आने वाली पीढ़ियों को हमें अपने साथियों को अवेयर कर रहे हैं लेकिन जितने भी लोगों ने सर का ये व्याख्यान सुना है उन सबको कम से कम अपने ऊपर अपने आप को आत्म अनुशासित कर लेना चाहिए जिससे हम और एक बहुत अच्छी चीज सर ने भी कहा और मैं अभी पिछले दिनों कुछ प्रॉब्लम थी पैर में तो मैं मैदानता गई थी और वहाँ मैं जब डॉक्टर त्रहन से मिली तो उन्होंने मुझे एक बहुत अच्छी बात कही उन्होंने मुझे कहा कि डॉक्टर कुछ नहीं करेंगे पहले आप अपना ध्यान रखिए डॉक्टर केवल आपको कुछ समय के लिए रिलीफ देंगे तो आपको ये ढूंढना पड़ेगा आपको कोच ढूंढने पड़ेंगे कि आपको जो भी परेशानी हो रही है उसके कारण क्या है और आज पुनः डॉक्टर विनीत ने भी यही कहा कि हम यदि अपने आप को कई बार हमारी जो चेयरपर्सन है नगरी जी ये बहुत अच्छी बात कहती है हम कभी कभी मजाक में कहते हैं कि कोविड से हम सब बचे हुए हैं और हम वही से यहाँ रेगुलर काम कर रहे हैं इतने लोगों के कांटेक्ट में आते हैं और उसका शायद यही एक रीजन है जितने भी लोग हम इस संस्थान में इस संस्थान के बारे में मैं दावे के साथ ये कह सकती हूँ कि यहाँ जो भी जितने भी कार्य करने वाले या परिवार के सदस्य हैं मैं परिवार के सदस्य ही कहूंगी एफ आई परिवार और हमारा आई परिवार है यहाँ के जो भी सदस्य है वो पूरे दावे के साथ में ये कह सकती हूँ अपवाद तो कहीं भी हो सकता है लेकिन हमारे यहाँ पे ऑर्गेनिक फूड या फिर संतुलित आहार या इस तरह की जो कंज्यूम करने वाली जो हमारे शरीर को नुकसान पहुंचाए ऐसी चीजों से हम बचे हुए हैं लेकिन युवा पीढ़ी के लिए भी ये एक सुझाव है और केवल अपने तक मस्तमित रहिए आप युवा है आपको आगे भी कैंपेन चला करके इस चीज को रोकना है मैं डॉक्टर विनीत का नंदी मैम का चेयरमैन सर का और संजीव जी का डॉक्टर अनिता मुखर्जी प्रगति एंड प्रशांत जी सभी का दोनों संस्थाओं की ओर से पुनः धन्यवाद करती हूँ और सर से निवेदन करती हूँ कि समय समय पर इस तरह से हमारे जो संस्थान के विद्यार्थी हैं और हम परिवार के जो भी सदस्य हैं उन्हें इस तरह से आप जो भी मेडिकल से जुड़ी हुई जानकारी है और अवेयरनेस प्रोग्राम है वो आप आते रहें और हमारा आतिथ्य स्वीकार करते रहें धन्यवाद नमस्कार